justice to the victims. Nicole Simpson did not receive justice. Why? Because we did not convict O.J. Simpson. That's pretty serious. Oh, we let him go. Now, I know he got his just reward. But he did not get convicted for the crime he committed. That's not right, y'all. That's an indictment of what is going on in the spiritual realm. That's an indictment against us as a nation that we didn't convict a killer because of circumstantial evidence. That's wrong. And that's what I'm talking about tonight. Each decision that you make personally in your life that is made about you personally in your life is a temperature of whether the soul is ruling the world or whether the spirit is ruling the world. And when the soul rules, it is, it is injustice because the soul is about the mind and the emotions and it's going to be dishonest. It is going to cheat. It is going to lie. It is going to sin. The soul is the flesh, the spirit. God says those who worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth. Righteousness, death, law, judgment. Righteousness is the throne of I mean, the foundation of his throne on the right side. And when you come to God and you say, okay, God, I got these sins. I need a lot of grace. He gives you that grace. But as you continue to go up higher with him, then you understand that you've got to come to righteousness. And then he extends the golden scepter over to you so that you can have the blessings and the prosperity and all that. But why should we keep giving people who are on welfare and people who are drug addicts and all that, food stamps and all that? Why should we keep doing that? So that they can go out and take their food stamps and sell them for drugs. That's being done. I heard of a woman who is fat. I, I, I'm going to say it because I'm brave. She's fat. She gets disability because she's fat. And you know what she does? She sits home and eats donuts to be fatter. Y'all, this is injustice. And it makes my blood boil because I've grown in my spirit. My soul doesn't rule me anymore. I was fine. I was asleep. Everything was good until I started reading the Bible. Until I started obeying God. Everything was good. But then when I started obeying God, I started going, what is going on? It's not right. Who's going to do something about it? It doesn't take much to eat an elephant. Just one bite at a time. You've got to start where you are. You've got to say, Lord, I want justice to come. I want my situation to be toppled by this soul situation. It happened. I mean, I'm just, I'm thrilled at that. I told Tracy that the hornets were going to go before her. And what's so funny is God actually physically manifested a hornet's nest where she is to run the, the people that are giving her a hard time away. That's my God. I don't get to control that type of God. I say, yes, sir. I bow to him. I worship that type of God. He tells me what to do. I don't tell him what to do. But see, the thing is, is that we have to rise above the soul if we're ever going to do anything about our nation or about our world. We've got to rise above our own soul first. And then the soul of our family. And then the soul of our neighborhood. And then the soul of our city. And you continue from there. And God says that we can have the nations. It's our inheritance. Ask of me and I'll give you the nations. But you aren't going to have that with grace. As a sinner. Keep needing his grace because you keep sinning. No, you can only have that with glory. Clean hands and a pure heart are the only ones that are going to send up that mountain. The word crisis, it means all crisis has been handed over to the son. I'm sorry. The word crisis, the Lord said, now look up all the places where crisis is used in the Bible. And I about went crazy because this is amazing. All crisis has been handed over to the son. 
That does not mean Jesus only. Jesus pierced the veil to bring many sons to glory. God is raising up children to learn how to be sons so he can give them the family business. Full-grown sons. Romans 8 says all creation's groaning for the sons, the true sons of God to be revealed. But they grow by eating the spirit word. Okay? So all Christ has been handed over to the son. That means you. John 5, 22, for not even the father judges anyone, but he has given all judgment to the son. But let me be clear. No one is going to judge unless you've laid your life down and unless you have clean hands and a pure heart and you hear your father. And you don't judge by what you see in the soul realm. You judge by what you hear. And the judgment brings fruit in the person's life. You don't just go around and go, well, I don't like that person, I don't like that person, I don't like that person. I'm going to bring fire down from heaven. You don't know what spirit you are when you do that. You judge to move things out of people's way so that they can have fruit in their life. Okay? That's what crisis is all about. The son does not mean Jesus. Please understand that. All creation is groaning, and Jesus himself calls us judges. This is a hard message because the church hasn't taught this. But he calls us judges. I mean, it's in Psalm 82, but then Jesus repeats it in John 10, 30. It says, I and the Father are one. He was saying, I and the Father are one. I think Jesus was going around trying to irritate the soul. <laughs> I'm serious. Jesus was not a ooey gooey Jesus. He was not a, oh, let's all get along, love and joy and peace like we've been told. He irritated those Pharisees and Sadducees. And so he goes, I and the Father are one. Can you see it? Jesus answered them, I show you many good works from the Father. Because they picked up stones and they were going to throw at him when he said that. Right? But he said, for which of them are you stoning me? And the Jews answered him, for a good work we don't stone you, but for blasphemy. Blasphemy against what? Against the soul, not the spirit. And because you being a man, make yourself out to be God. But see, Ephesians 4.11 says, he gave some to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, until we all come to the fullness. What does that mean? That means we're born <clears throat> with one of those. But we are to have all five. We are to be a prophet, a pastor, a teacher. Whenever God wants us to do whatever, we are to have the fullness. We aren't to stop and say, oh, well, this person's an apostle, and, this, and we come together. and we're No, you're to have the fullness by yourself. That's what the Bible says. <clears throat> so you need to understand, as I taught on Monday night, which was awesome. Y'all need to get that if you didn't get it. I taught on Monday night that we are the manifestation of God on this earth. We were not... <clears throat> Genesis 1-1 and Genesis 1-2, God created the heavens and the earth. And then Genesis 1-2, and the earth was without form and void and darkness covered the waters of the deep. We just read that and we don't even think anything about it. But in Genesis 1-2, something bad happened. Because God created a beautiful world... But then it has the waters cover the deep. That word is urine, semen, waste. My God didn't create this world and then pee on it. <laughs> I'm not religious, y'all. <laughs> so what happened? What happened was Ezekiel 28 and Isaiah 14 will tell you that we were put on this earth to restore we were given four jobs. Be fruitful, multiply, subdue the earth, and fill it. Subdue what? If we were put on a nice little planet and everything was all sunshine and, and joy, then what do we have to subdue? No, the enemy was out there. And the enemy destroyed the earth because the enemy, it was a garden of God that it talks about, not a garden of Eden. Garden of Eden was a vegetation garden. Garden of God was minerals and, and precious stones and things like that. Two different things. But the point is, is that man was not put on here to just have a wonderful life. He was put on here to restore the earth back to God. 